I'm going to be looking at the little musette of Bach in the Anna Magdalena notebook. For, for those of you who like to know these details, it's BWV number Anhang 126. And probably you're very familiar with it. Uh, five finger position right hand. hearing Rosalind Turek do that as an encore. So if it's good enough for a, for a great uh, Bach specialist to play as an encore, I think we can all gain something from it, including those who have yet to learn to read music. And I'm going to show you a way that you can, if you're a teacher of piano, use this um, to get somebody really moving across the keyboard freely. We need to first understand how to play a five finger position. So I'm going to go into the key of D major and play a five finger position in this octave, up and down. I hope you'll be able to see that I'm using my fingers in conjunction with my arm. So as I come up to the fifth finger, do you see that I'm moving in this direction with a lateral movement of my wrist? That's really important, otherwise we end up playing with little piston fingers and getting all stuck tight in the wrist. So we move across. Now if we can do that freely, we don't need to, to read the notation to be able to appreciate that rhythm which we can play and we can clap uh, in copying from the teacher. So if the teacher would play up here a few times, pupil should be able to do that as an, a response. It's, we call it echoes. So the teacher plays, it could even be in this octave, and the pupil copies that in the above octave. Once they've got that uh, coordinated and, and right, let's move down to the lower octave and do the same thing with, which could be broken down. We could break it down like, like this the first part, or until we can do that. So let's say my left hand is the teacher and my right hand is the pupil. And maybe the teacher will need to do it again. And the pupil will need to get it improved until they can do it so that the teacher's version and the pupil's version match exactly. Now what we've got is five fingers here, then five fingers down there, then back, the same hand position. The difficulty with this is moving from one hand position to the next. So my way of using this piece for beginners is to have them play in one octave, not to have the skip from one octave to the other. So I'm going to play this hand position. In the same octave. To start with. Now, what about, what about the left hand? Well, the left hand has to do broken octaves here. Then it joins in with the right hand. at a time. What I'm going to do is to play my right hand only, then hands together, right hand, once that stage has been mastered we can start to add the left hand down here but instead of octaves 
which for a small hand, quite difficult to jump accurately, we can just play the beats with the fifth finger. splitting the, the octave up in the left hand. And the next stage, of course, is to move the hand up in the right hand to this octave. And practice the landing, because we need to be able to release the keyboard here Once that's been mastered, again, step by step by step, we can then play. And again, I've got a join to make from these two thumbs to the fifth fingers. Quite a lot of coordination to deal with all in one go, but if we break it up, you'll find that you can actually teach that piece very successfully without looking at the notation at all. second half to start with, you can just leave it there and use this now as a vehicle for transposition. And I think transposition should be encouraged from the very, very beginnings when pupils are picking out their pieces by ear. What happens to that tune if you started on a note higher or on the G instead of the C? What, what adjustments do we need to make? And they'll soon hear, oh, if I start my tune on the G, I need to have a black F rather than a white F. Um, how about, by ear, again, not by notation, seeing if they can do the same thing now in the key of C. And here it is now in the key of E. such as E flat major. You probably wouldn't finger this, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So I would suggest leaving out those keys, but you could do a whole variety of different keys for transposition. Now what does transposition do? Ear training, it's wonderful for ear training, also for keyboard geography. So if I'm playing an E major position, five fingers, I'm going to need two black notes, F sharp and G sharp. If I'm playing an F major, I'm going to need a B flat, so my fourth finger will be black note. What this does is just develop those skills from the very, very earliest stages of learning, plus you get all this beautiful negotiation of the keyboard from high positions to low position, all without the, the need for notation. So do try that out. You, you'd be amazed at what you can teach by pattern and by I don't hesitate to use the word copying, it's not really copying, it's, it's understanding, it's by rote. Teacher plays, the pupil responds as an echo. And um, pretty soon you can have some amazing things going. Um, and this of course is a sideline to reading notation. I'm not suggesting for a minute that we avoid teaching notation. But I am suggesting that in addition to that, we can develop certain skills that would take forever uh, we had to wait for them to be able to read these notes, but they can play them without any difficulty, provided they're presented in step-by-step -step stages.